Okay, so question here, how do you edit the look and feel of the text within pop-ups? Um, and there's, there's, there's two different ways I'll show you. Now, unfortunately, if I click on a pop-up here, okay, so I have uh, data loaded in from a previous lesson. It's fiber features, so what's a pole, what's a chamber in terms of rolling out fiber broadband. But if I come in here, there's not much I can do to change the, the look and feel of the table as such. Um, but what I can do is make the pop-ups more meaningful. So by default, you'll see it's this gray table followed by a light gray row, followed by a dark gray row. Uh, and there's not much I can do to edit this. I can't make this side bold or anything like that out of the box. But what I can do is start to make the pop-ups a little more meaningful. So from here, if I go in, I have my pop-up loaded in for a particular point. And I'm going to come across here to the right and click pop-ups. And now you can see here, just by default, I have title. So if I want to, you know, by, by default, it comes in as the name of the feature layer. But if I want to change this to something like fiber points, I can and it'll change. More meaningful, though, is if I wipe that entirely. Uh, and I have this label here within my pop-up so I can make it even more meaningful for that point. Okay, so what I've done now is changed it to bring me back for every point. You know, if this is a house, it might have an air code that I put up top. It might have an address. Whatever it is, I can make that individual per pop-up now uh, dynamically. My other option then as well is to say, okay, well, you know, I don't really want to have label in it twice because I have a label up top now on the pop-up, so I want to go and get rid of it. Same window. Same tab here, and I go in, and I can just X out label. And then you might say as well, like, oh, actually, you know what? I, I want fiber type up top, and I want the mount down the bottom. And you can do that just by dragging and dropping here. You know, so if I want it visible, yes, no, before condition, I can do that, and it changes on the fly. The other option, though, is to uh, get rid of this table. Yeah, and uh, now you have a lot more flexibility when it comes to it. So in the table, the default view, can't really make things bold, can't really make things italic. But what I can do is click these three dots here and click delete. Now what I can do is say add content. And from here, I have different options, right? So feel this we just got rid of because it's by default. I can do charts, I can do images. Uh, but what I want to show you here is go into text. And now I have a text editor. Okay, I don't have a table, but what I can start doing is uh, putting in text here. Condition. If I could spell condition, that would be great. And now from here, on your keyboard, open up curly brackets. And now I have access to my attributes. And I can say, okay, condition equals condition. Next tab. Amount is another field within this. And I can say amount, and you can put in more meaningful information. So if your value is, in this case, in meters, I could put in M, I could put in the full meters, you know, uh, and then I can say fiber type. Open up my curly brackets, click on my attribute table. Now that's all well and good, but now I have more uh, options when it comes to styling this text. So I can put in condition in bold, or I could put my values in bold, uh, or I could put, you know, um, my my field name in bold italics, and I could put the value in. Italics, and that's all I'm doing here. I'm just using keyboard shortcuts, you know, Control B for bold, Control I for italics. I can make this underlined as well. Um, I can make this bigger, okay, too, if I wanted to say, you know what, I want to give this a size of 14, 24, right, whatever it is. Then you're fairly limited. It's either 10, 12, 14, 18, or 24. I can make the whole thing bold if I want. Uh, and then you have options on text. Now, you know, by default, it's going to be um, 
for Danda. If you want it to be Arial, Courier, whatever it is, that's fine. But then you can also change the text. So you can say, okay, well, actually, I want this to be uh, red. Now, again, what I mentioned at the start, you are quite limited by these. Yeah? So um, you, you got to choose from the color palette almost, uh, unfortunately. And you can also link things out, you know. So if I wanted to go in and um, the ArcGIS blog, you know, for instance, just to grab a URL real quick, what I can do then is if I have a link, I can highlight my text and pop in a link here. Uh, so that each pop-up then gets a link back. And links don't necessarily need to be other websites. Uh, they can be other maps within your ArcGIS Online account. They can be, you know, hyperlinks to files saved on a server. So if you have PDFs and it's on, like, for example, the F drive, you know, and it's our planning drive or project drive, whatever it is, uh, you can do all that as well. Uh, and you can hyperlink back to that. So let's see what this one looks like here. If I click OK... Let's click on a point again. And you can see here I have my label. Uh, probably not the best pop-up, but just to show you the options, right? So if I click on this, I get, you know, the link out to the ArcGIS blog. I get a mount, 9 meters. Again, this could be anything that I wanted it to be. You know, and I have a small, bold, italic text here. And then I have italic underlined text there. Uh, and it's just one way you can make it more meaningful. Alternatively as well... You could pick out uh, an emoji library, um, something I quite like to do with pop-ups, you know, and you can go in and say, okay, well, you know, I want the, to get a, an emoji here, say it's an hourglass, uh, I can just click on that, there's, there's tons of emoji libraries out there, I can copy this, I can go back to my pop-up, go back to here, and just paste that in. Uh, just to give your pop-ups more of a, a look and feel, the reason why this um, might be a little more underlined than it should be is just because I've put in a space, so you can go out, back in, delete them, you can go back to your emoji library, and say like, let's choose bellhop, and I can just copy that, gives you, most uh, emoji libraries will give you a copy and paste functionality, uh, you can see here, because that's italic, I want to change that so it's upright more. Um, and quite cool if you, if you need to, you know, call out information as well. There's emoji libraries on everything that could be alarms, could be exclamation marks, could be stop signs, could be anything. Yeah, uh, and you can have access to that as part of your pop-ups. That's a pretty weird-looking pop-up, but I'm sure, hopefully, uh, that this video has helped you um, demystify how to edit text within pop-ups.